not get small-minded. We get this brute, brute beatish, beastish attitude toward one another, like, like automatons. A cold heart, the hearts of many will wax cold, Jesus said, right toward the end of the age. And I'm seeing that everywhere. It's so hard. People are so freaked out and scared and worried and insecure and stifled. Their freedom is gone. They, they, they're being controlled and they're being they're being uh, repressed and oppressed. And it feels bad. And they're you know and so their love is waxing cold, just like Christ said right before the end of the age. And that happens. Seamless transition to the new age. But the rubber is meeting the road. That's the good news. That should be encouraging to people. That I've had to witness my whole life is just America has been going down, and the federal labor department's been in. I explained that they, you know, how they've done it, how it happened gradually. They couldn't have done it over. They couldn't have told people in the early '60s when a buck an hour afforded them a middle class life, and say tomorrow your your buck an hour you'll still get, but it's going to be worth a nickel. Okay, if they tried that, that but that's essentially what's happened. Okay, it's all math, my friends. I'm not making nothing up. Okay, maybe I'll be a little hyperbolic sometime just to make a point. But believe me, I know what I'm talking about. And it's math. It's inarguable. It's irrefutable. But we've been taken, man. And we're really in bad shape. And these people have just run roughshod over. They're just mean people, man. They're just mean people. And they're turning us into mean people, cold-hearted. The love of many or most, it says, will wax cold. And I see that. I see the temptation in my own heart and mind, and it scares me, and I can't let it happen. I've got to remember to love my enemy. I've got to remember to love myself. I've got to remember to turn to God for the, for the strength I need to carry on and help others to understand that's where they need to turn. It's my only hope. No human being could save my life. I can't save any other human being's life. I'm not going to pretend I can. I'm not going to tell you I can all best I can do is point to you that one one that can. Jesus Christ. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It's as much as we need to know about the Creator God Almighty as we need to. We can learn from Christ and His teachings. How we should be walking on God's green earth. Our attitude, our spirit, our desire, our will, our values. All that stuff we should allow Him to mold in us. And it, it, it's, it's, it, there's a dramatic contrast. And then you go, oh my God, what a departure the way it is now from what God is determined that it is going to be on earth. He's going to get his way. And if you fight him, I mean, that's to your own demise. That's to your own peril. Uh, you, you want to end up where these mean people are going? These bullies? There's going to be a separation. You understand how it's got to work? And there's going to be a, a generation physically alive at that time. And they're never going to taste death. That's what's going to happen. There's going to be people alive. You might be one of them. I might be one of them. We don't know. When the return of Christ happens, this array, this multitude of holy angels called the har harvesters of souls is going to descend upon the earth. And this is what's finally going to happen. It's going to be very traumatic for those that aren't prepared for such a literal event. So I believe it's literal. Even if it's just metaphorical, hey, they say it's all like a simulation anyhow. So who cares? Just so it happens. Just so the good guy wins and prevails. And we have peace on earth for everybody. We have equality. We're human beings, equally beloved by our father and mother. And we need to treat others the same way. Equally beloved. As just as we care just as much about them as our own kids, our own selves. That's what we must do to inherit an eternity in paradise. And it's easy to do. With God's help, we can do that. If you can imagine it, then you can manifest it. You can attain it. You can do it. He wouldn't ask us to do something we couldn't do. And he uses flawed people for his causes every day of the week. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't be able to use any of us. I'm flawed. I'm a sinner. I don't like it. It doesn't profit me anything. And I'm not talking dollars and cents. You know what I mean? It doesn't bring joy to my heart, ultimately. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't fulfill me. It doesn't gratify me. It doesn't satisfy me because God is the grantor of true happiness. And if we're trying to find it in something else, some vice, some addiction, some form of escapism, 
that we dissipate our time, some being healthier than others, but nonetheless, they are what they are. This is its metaphorical self-flagellation, a metaphorical slashing of the wrist. Sometimes it's literal. Sometimes people kill themselves. They can't handle it. But we're in it together, and we need to care about each other like our own selves, like our own children. That goes for strangers and the least of men, whoever you believe that to be, honestly. We cannot be both a genuine friend to another and a yes man. Yes men have an ulterior motive, perhaps simply to keep a job, while friends only want to be your friend. I have no desire to be big brother to any person, and I have equally little desire to have a big brother. You know, I'm talking about the dictionary definition. I'm not talking about literally big brother. That big brother would be great. I've never had a brother. Satan's long, age-long belly laugh is quickly turning to sorrow. That's what all these demons are so angry about. They're very perturbed about knowing they're going down and going down hard with their own decision. Are you deluded on any particular issue? Be your own best friend by not dismissing this possibility too quickly. Anyone can be deceived. Our responsibility is to consider if we may be one of those. You want to know what's a big fat load? When people say, quote, who cares what so-and-so thinks of you, end quote. Normal, healthy-minded people, of course, care about what others think about them. It's only logical to assume. But due to our conditioning, we're taught, well, no, you shouldn't care what others think about. That's stupid. There are certain truths, certain facts, certain realities none can evade. Among those things is knowing with certainty we pay now or we pay later, literally and allegorically and spiritually speaking. I wonder what that says for the national debt. Nobody wants to talk about it. We're a part of something not only big, but humongous. An eternity in an infinite universe. A cosmic, ever-expanding, godlike existence. I am the way and the truth and the life Christ taught. When I say we are all to live vicariously through God and God will live vicariously through us, some will say that world doesn't even appear in the, that word doesn't even appear in the bible but just like so many neo terms that word didn't exist thousands of years ago yeah a lot of words are kind of new and if you look up a, a, in a concordance a word if you wonder if it's new or old you can find that out by one's own prerogative they can choose not to be your friend but they cannot decide that you are not their friend to be no man's enemy is every man's choice. My motto is that life's short, get smart quick. Ergo, I am pro-education, pro-knowledge, and pro-information. Nevertheless, being charged for an education, for knowledge, for information, fundamentally teaches the wrong message. Monetary freedom isn't important to learn, yet you must pay to be a hypocrite like us. Everybody honest knows that hands-on learning cuts to the chase and is efficient and effective is an efficient and effective way to learn how to do what we want to do with our lives monetary concern should have no role in the decision of what we choose to do with our lives understand that capitalism is a game a game many people cannot resist taking very seriously just as in the board game Monopoly, people often lose everything and are effectively out of the game. The only difference is that in real life, when you lose the game of capitalism, you may wind up losing your life under a bridge. I, of course, speak of pseudo-capitalism because when the game is played fair, everyone wins. No, rather, pseudo-capitalism is a rigged game rife with in-your-face cheaters. Well, friends, I got to leave it there. Listen, I wish the best to everybody. Have a great day. Have a great life. Have a great eternity. Okay? Um, go out and try to win friends for God, for our owner, and please him. Seek to please him above all else, and that's the surest path to happiness. Okay? 
So again, best to everybody, and um, have a good one. Hopefully I'll see you again.